everyone. I want to talk with you today about a way to do a better shoulder roll. Very often shoulder rolls are used as a way of warming the body up when we're about to start singing. Sometimes they're used in a yoga class and I think that they're a move that people can use without really thinking about what they're doing or why they're doing it or what the movement is doing for the body. So I want to break down the shoulder roll for you and give you some things to watch for and maybe some ways of doing it better and making it more effective than it's been. So to begin, if you're going to have someone do shoulder rolls, have them take their shoes off and have them stand in the pose that we call Tadasana or mountain pose where their feet are hip width distance apart and their body is feeling like it's pretty free to just stand in space and they can feel their feet on the ground. Now, from there, just have them start rolling their shoulders without giving them any other direction. And I want you to begin to notice some things as they're rolling their shoulders. And if it's someone who has fairly good um, proprioception, and kinesthetic sense of the body, you can ask them for feedback. But if people aren't experienced in noticing their body in space, they might not be able to tell you. So you have to be their, their eyes to help them. So notice first if the head is jutting as they're doing the shoulder roll. So if I turn to the side, you know, if the head is really moving and coming out, that's something that you want to watch for. Um, you also want to notice, I'm going to back up a little bit, if the rib cage is thrusting. So if they're rolling and there's almost like a wave-like motion where the ribs are coming forward, I want you to notice that too. The other thing that you can um, notice is whether the arm is leading the motion. So are they kind of pulling the arms up and really moving the arms more than the shoulder blades. We want the shoulder blades to be driving the action. So you might be able to notice, it's great in the summer if people are wearing tank tops, you can see a little bit better. Are the shoulder blades moving or is it really just being driven by the arms? Now you may or may not be able to see that their breath is changing, so you might ask them. And when you have them begin and stand in Tadasana, you can, along with feeling the body, you can just have them feel the breath too. So notice that the breath is changing. And then if you can see any shift in the jaw, you might also ask them if they're tensing their jaw and ask them to give you feedback. So then have them stop. And you can kind of make note of the things that you've noticed in the body as they're doing that. And we're gonna repeat it this time. But I want them and I want you to bring your attention to the shoulder blades. So if they can reach and feel their shoulder blades on the body, that's something that they can do. If they lack that mobility and um, it's a situation where it's okay and you're not crossing any boundaries for you to put your hands on their shoulder blades, that's another way for you to um, help them identify where they are. If you have a skeleton around or even a picture, just sometimes showing them a picture of the shoulder blades helps them build that map in their brain. And what we're gonna do is think about bringing the shoulder blades up towards the ears together and then back down. So you'll notice that this, this shoulder roll is driven by my arms and it's really not doing much to really help the motion of my shoulder blades, which is the point of a shoulder roll. So you're going to bring the shoulder blades up together and then down. Now, as we make this motion smaller, you again want to look for those things. Is the head or chin jutting? Are they still, at a certain point, can they raise the shoulder blades, but then the arms are taking over and doing the rest? At a certain point in the pattern, is the rib cage thrusting? Is the breath changing? Is the jaw tightening? And if you notice that those things are happening, you want them to make the motion smaller and smaller. It might look something like this but now we're actually getting the pure range of motion that their shoulder blades have. And when we work there, they'll be able to make eventually bigger motions with those shoulder blades that aren't just willy nilly sort of rolling your shoulders and be like, I did something for my body today. So play around with your shoulder blades. We're gonna look for ease of breath, freedom in the jaw, uh, freedom in the shoulder blades being able to move and not being driven by the arms and what the rib cage is doing. So try out today and see if you can find a better way to do a shoulder roll.